We're going to jump right into the next question that says the following. Please help me understand Deuteronomy 22.5. So let's go right to Deuteronomy 22.5. I'm reading from the King James Version, just so we can understand. Uh, and it says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So this person wants to understand what Deuteronomy 22.5 is talking about. Yeah. What does the Bible say? Oh, it's very interesting mm -hmm. uh, that we have this verse and I think there are different opinions how to mm -hmm. interpret that. Mm -hmm. But the good thing also to go to the beginning, you know, and read at the beginning of the Bible, Genesis 1, 27, mm. your international version, because this is, you know, the beginning of the creation story, the beginning of the creation of man and uh, woman. Mm -hmm. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Mm -hmm. So genders were established by God. Mm -hmm. So, and they were established at creation. Mm -hmm. And when we compare this or look at this verse and compare with the uh, cited verse, we can say that the principle behind that is God established genders and he would like to keep the distinction, right. mm -hmm. even in clothes. And also another interesting thing is that many researchers think that this particular verse from Deuteronomy goes back to the heathen cultures right. where mm -hmm. they do dress, you know, crossing and during some heathen ceremonies to um, kind of cue themselves from infertility. Mm -hmm. So there, there was such kind of, you know, rituals and so on. So mm -hmm. kind of preserve people from that. But um, other biblical scholars see even more in this text mm -hmm. because uh, Hebrew people did not have these rituals. And they think that, you know, although back in those times, clothes also differed in details and styles for men and women. Mm -hmm. Men did not wear, you know, pants and trousers mm. and women did not wear blouses and maybe skirts and our mm -hmm. understanding and shapes, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's not proper to say, for example, that uh, skirts, men's skirts in Scotland are wrong right, right. now right. <laughs> because they're kind of, you know, women's clothes for us. Mm -hmm. Because we can remember robes yes. back on those times for men and they were appropriate. Mm -hmm. So what we can say or take from that? We can say that back then, <clears throat> although the clothes for men and women, different in styles and details, but it was clear distinction at that time and culture, what is appropriate for men and women to wear. It's clear distinction of clothes. And God would like us to keep this distinction. Mm -hmm. In our culture, in our terms, and also society kind of provides many choices. But we also read from scripture, and I read the first part of First Timothy, second chapter, verse nine, mm -hmm. New International Version. I also want the women to dress modestly. modestly. So many choices are provided today. Mm -hmm. But let us keep in mind that God in rejoices in seeing His image reflected in both genders, and He wants us to keep this distinction even in our clothes. Amen. Thank you so much for that very detailed response, Dr. Stelling.